Welcome to Grant's Rock Warehouse, and tonight DM Bolt is back. We are talking the mothers. Just another band from LA from 1972. Let's get started. Talking bands no one talks about. Grant's Rock Warehouse. Welcome to Grant's Rock Warehouse, and tonight we are live, and we're here talking some Frank Zappa. Mr. B.M. Bolt is here, the co-host of this fine program, and tonight we are in 1972, and we're going to talk about the Mother's album, Just Another Band from L.A. So, this is the last album in that whole conglomeration of Flo and Eddie records. Thank the Lord on that. But this is the last one. So we're going to look at it. I think uh, Mr. Bolt has a high opinion of this record. I'm not going to say what my opinion is yet, but uh, we're going to talk about it. But this was recorded in August 7th, 1971 at Pauley Pavilion in UCLA. Yeah. And like I said, this is the last album that had Mark Volman and uh, Howard Kalen on it. And if you've heard this record, you know that they're all over this record. I'm just going to say that. So we have Ian Underwood. We have Ainsley Dunbar, great drummer. Don Preston. Jim Pons is on this record too as well. And he was also in the Turtles with Volman and uh, Kalen. Um, there's a couple of songs here that were on previous records that they're, these are live versions, kind of revamped. But I'm just going to leave it at that. And I'm going to throw it over to uh, Byron to... Uh, get his thoughts on this record. And what we're going to end up doing, like we always do on this series is rank these albums out of 10. So, uh, Mr. Bolt, welcome to the show. Nice to see you. And I'm sure Good to be you're here. ready to go yeah. and you're ready to talk some Frank. Yeah. I know this album pretty well. Uh, 200 hotels, you know, is I kind of know it, but I don't know it intimately as I know this one. So I've heard this one way more. Um, yeah, you'd said it was recorded in August of 71. Um, it was released in March, March 22nd of 72. Um, oddly enough, um, this band broke up basically, um, when Frank got pushed off the stage at the Rainbow Theater in London, which was about a week after the Montro Casino fire, which was December 4th of 71. So it's pretty exciting December they had. Um, but uh, yeah, after that, Frank got pushed off stage. He got hurt real bad. They basically just, just, just disbanded this version of the Mothers and they, you know, never got it back together again with that lineup. But uh, yeah, um, here's my CD. I've got the uh, original CD version of it. Uh, you probably got a reissue. No, no, no. I've got the same one. Oh, you got the green case, though, which is usually a little newer, I think. No, the green cases were original Ricos. Yours, my friend, a little newer. The green cases were the original cases. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, some people say they like the sound of this better than the vinyl. They think that the vinyl is a little muddy. I don't know. Um, but there's apparently a lot of flaws on this CD. Uh, and uh, they were corrected with the 2012. The tw 2012 is the original vinyl. Mix. Like I said, some people don't prefer that to this. So wait a minute. You're saying that did was this remixed? Was this one remixed in the 2012? Uh, I can't say if it was remixed or if it was just mm. remastered. But some people just say that they think that the vinyl is a little muddy. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really ever compared them. So. Anyway, yeah, anyway. The, uh, the cover art is a Cal Shankle design. Um, pretty cool, you know. It's uh, gives off a little bit of that vibe that you got from, you know, uh, Ruben and the Jets in that period. So it's kind of a nice cover. Uh, you mentioned the guys in the band. Um, now, apparently, this was going to be a double album originally, but they decided not to. It was going to be. Um, the second album would have been the, a lot of the solos, which they edited out of Billy in the Mountain on here. Mm -hmm. And a song called um, The Subcutaneous Peril, which is another instrumental, which is on Finer Moments, which is, was a posthumous release. Um, so, yeah, I, I've heard that, but I don't really remember anything about it. If we ever get to that album, 
in five years, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll circle around in five. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, this album has a lot. It refers, if you weren't from LA back at this time, you might not get a lot of these references because it's very, a lot of the references are specific to that area. And I think depending on where they were playing, they would change some of these references. But uh, you'll hear a lot of things in here. It's like, well, I don't know what they're talking about, you know. Well, good point. If you think about it, they mentioned Howard Johnson's. We haven't had a Howard Johnson's in existence for years. People wouldn't get, yeah. get that now, but. No, yeah, we did we used to have one, but that was in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, you know, I guess whenever you're ready to dive into the tracks, we can dive into them. Uh, unless you got anything else you want to discuss. Uh, yeah. No, I think we can just go right into it. It's gonna, there's only like what six tracks on it pretty much. Cause Billy, the mountain takes up all uh, of side one. Right. So why don't you just start out with that and we'll go from there. So my, my first question, had you heard this before? Uh, no. No. You'd heard the covers, uh, the, 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 remade, the remade tracks. But well, of course, because those are all classics. The original versions were classics. Yes, I know those. Yeah, okay, just make, make it sure. But um, no, I had never. It, when I'm going, okay, let me just say this. Whenever I go out into the wild and I find go out and hunt for CDs, I've always had that original Mothers of Invention catalog because all that is just absolutely stunning. This is, or one, I would pick this up have I, had I seen it in the wild, but Byron, this ne I never see this. You know, I had to buy this off Discogs, so oh, I... I just saw a copy. Some guys I know have it on vinyl. They're getting rid of a copy of it. I could have got, got a nice copy for 15 at the show. Oh, well, that's no but, three bucks. Yeah, okay. yeah I, mean, I got the CD. I'm You're good. fine. I'm good. But, um, yeah, all right. So let's dig into this. So it kicks off with Billy the Mountain. And that's the whole first side, and it's 25 minutes long. And... Um, Basically, Billy the Mountain is a parody of rock operas. Um, I think I mentioned that it's 25 minutes. Basically, though, it was it was typically longer than that. It was typically the 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the show from night to night. Um, on this album, they edited out all the, the uh, instrumental solos in it to shorten it down. Um, it's also on the Carnegie Hall show. Uh, Playground Psychotics, and the Mother 71 box set. And there's five versions of it, the song on that box set. <laughs> and it's all Flo and Eddie too, right? Yes. Um, I think I may have listened to all those versions on that box set one time. I don't know. But, you know, every night the show would be a little different because they'd be in a different location and they'd ad lib some things differently. But I'm most familiar with this version. Logan, you're out of your gourd. 84-minute version of Billy the Mountain. Now, let me ask you this, because before we keep go on, I do have a question before I forget. Yeah. You mentioned there are, on the box set, there are multiple versions of it. Mm -hmm. Are those edited down, or are those like full versions of Billy the Mountain with I, all the instrumental parts? Is there a version out there that's the whole piece i'd I like to hear that carnegie hall is a uh i think it comes in about 45 plus minutes um mm -hmm. i i was kind of eyeballing that box set and i think most of them were in the 30 minute range so I okay don't, i don't know that they're but like i said it, it could have been the full version they just maybe had fewer solos that night i don't know but the carnegie hall show is real long the, right. that, that version cool. so I did kind of sample a little bit of that. And yeah, it was different because they, they referenced places in New York and New Jersey as opposed to uh, Southern California like they do on this album. So, so yeah, it is slightly different. All right, cool. All right, so we'll get into the actual song now. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what we're dealing with here, like I said, it's, a, it's kind of a parody on a rock opera and the story has a lots of narration in it. Um, a lot of times it's Jim Pons doing the narrating. Not always, but 
Um, I don't know. I always hear Mark and I hear yeah. Howard doing it. Yeah, that's there is some of that too. And um, but then that narration it's interspersed with music and mm. news reports. Uh, Jim Pons is doing the news report. Oh, okay. That's, that's okay. what I'm referring to. Gotcha. Um, so you know, it's the stars of the the song are Billy the Mountain. <laughs> He's a mountain. <laughs> Um, his wife, Ethel, who's a tree growing off of his shoulder, and Studebaker Hawk. All right. So you're probably going to want to know who the hell is Studebaker Hawk. I'd want to know who is Studebaker well, Hawk. Studebaker Hawk at that time was a superhero of the current economic slump. All right. At least that's how they described him. Mm -hmm. um, some, some people say he looked like Zubin Mehta. Others say he was just a guy, greasy guy who was born next to the frozen beef pies at Boney's Market. <laughs> nobody really knows because he was so mysterious. Some men could say he could fly. Others say he could swim. Others say he could sing like Neil Sedaka. So that's my description of Studebaker Hawk. Let me ask you this. How does the adventures of Gregory Peckery come into play here? Yeah, um, I do believe Billy the Mountain makes an appearance in Gr Gregory Peckery. I'd have okay. to go back and listen to that again, but I think he is mentioned in there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're all it's, kind of interrelated. It, it, it's a, this is kind of like a, a Gregory Peckery. They're both a sidelong epic, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, but yeah, this one I think is a little more accessible. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to call it that well it's uh, well if you listen to this as opposed to some of the previous works i'd say this is a bit more accessible yeah gregory peckery seems it has a little more uh orchestration in it you know frank's uh classical type stuff mixed in i think is that <laughs> true wait a minute. is that true logan is greg billy's distant cousin <sighs> well, gregory know. gregory is a uh uh, peckery, which is a form of a pig, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. I'm throwing this out there. I we're all in this together, ladies and gentlemen. So in the chat, please chime in. But yeah, the Studebaker Hawk was a model of car. Yeah, Studebaker Hawk. But you know they're using it for a dude's right. name. So yeah. all right. So anyway, let's get into this. Yeah, the actual ahead. details of the story. I'm not going to be giving any spoilers though. You'll have to listen to it if you haven't. Um, so Billy, like we said, he is a mountain located in, and he is located in Southern California. And over, during his life, he's posed for a lot of pictures for postcards. And one day, this guy shows up with his royalty check for all the postcards he's posed in over the years. So um, Cedar Baker, or, uh, Billy says to Ethel, his wife, we're going to go on a vacation. So they're going to go to Vegas for their vacation. Well, there's only one problem with that. You know, if a mountain is going to move from one location to the other, he's going to cause a lot of destruction on the way. <laughs> so the story is about him trying to get to Las Vegas for their vacation and all the things that he destroys along the way. And during, during this story, we find out that, um, He's basically uh, gets drafted, and Ethel, being the communist that she is, she's like, "Billy, you're not, you're not going. You're, you're not going anywhere. You know, you're staying with me." So that's when they send Studebaker Hawk in to try and reason with him and get him to come back to the senses because he's got a report for his draft physical. So anyway, I won't go into any more details of what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the gist of the story. <laughs> right. And right there, it's messed up as it, as it is. So, but go ahead. But, uh, yeah. So during the story though, you know, they'll talk about how he destroys all these locations that are in Southern California. And then Jim Pons comes in as this news guy, you know, and he's got this Walter Cronkite kind of thing going on where he's, you know, listing all these places that are being destroyed and, and he's bringing out these news stories about you know how Ethel is a communist and uh, you know the things that are all going on and it's just I really enjoy this track. Now you can't listen to it more than once every few years. 
Cause or <laughs> once every five. <laughs> but um, I like it. I really do. Uh, it's uh, it's fun. And I, I like Flo and Eddie. To me, they're fun. And I, I dig this track. So go ahead. What are your thoughts on the song? Uh, I... This song made me want to jump off a building. Flo and Eddie, as much as a Turtles fan as I am, and I think all the Turtles stuff is brilliant. Great stuff. Great vocals. Great songwriting. We know that Mark and Howard can sing with the best of them. Listen to some of those vocals on... uh, the something together album absolutely stunning delivery we don't get anything like that here everything's kind of like a well it's like a what should i say it's not anything serious it's almost like they're doing like a i don't want to say a burlesque show what did we used to do in the early 19 19- oh let's vaudeville. Just say a vaudeville it's like vaudeville well, and i don't you I don't get it. Good thing you weren't around a hundred years ago. You'd probably be a miserable human being. You'd be like, well, this vaudeville sucks. No, I just don't. <laughs> I think it's childish. I think it's kind of simple. Um, it's not anything, anything really memorable to me. It's very just sticky. I don't find it funny at all. And I know Howard Kalen. I know both of those gentlemen are funny, but I just don't get it. And for me to spend 25 minutes of my life listening to this. And they're not this, funny then if you don't get it. I don't get it. It's very childish. Yeah. Maybe young Logan, who's 20, he might find it funny. But old man me, get off my get off my yard. I don't I find it funny. I was 20 when I discovered this. So I liked it when I was 20. The, I still like it. The only that thing. Difference. Yeah, I don't. I just don't get it. I don't get it. And I just don't think that the riffs or the, the music is all that compelling either. It's just like a big mess and it's not fun or funny, but that's just me. I will say this, this record sounds better than the Fillmore record. And it sounds better than, uh, the recordings that are on, uh, 200 motels, much better recording, much better recording. Um, it's not, I don't find it to be muddy on the CD at all. So that's the only plus I have that's about Billy it, the Mountain. That's because they said the CD didn't sound muddy. The vinyl sounded muddy. <laughs> yeah, but no, I'm trying to say okay. compared to the other CDs that we've looked at. Yeah. And we've been yeah, listening. Yeah. I think it sounds fine. I just don't find it. What I like, I like a balance of vocals and a balance of instrumentation. There's no one playing. It's just a bunch of noise. It's all vocal. It's too much for me. You, you might have liked the version with the solos in it then. Though. Yes. Well, that would be a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, but it would have bro- broken up the yeah. monotony. Yeah. I need to have some instrumentation, some guitar solos, some keyboard solos, some sax solos, something to break up the shtick that I think it really wears on me really quickly. Yeah, that's-, that's all. Your mileage may vary, but like I said in the previous episodes, this Flo and Eddie stuff. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Record Hound. Wait a minute. We need to address this. Record Hound says, I have the right go black CD reissue CD. It sounds like the tape was misaligned. That's what we've got on the heads. I don't know. I have to listen to it. I didn't hear that. I tried Record Hound to get the 2012. That's out of print. And it's not cheap. So I ended up just getting the Ryko. And, you know, I spent more money than I should have on it. But now I don't know what I was saying. But that's a good point. I'll have to re-listen to that again. And uh, maybe it is. But I can't imagine. Don't forget, Frank oversaw all these. And I know Frank would be able to hear something if the heads were misaligned. Maybe something else happened in the manufacturing of it. I don't know. Some people. Really thanks complained. for bringing that up. A lot of people complained about the things that he released though, shortly before he died. Like his hearing was not what it used to be. But anyway. Probably. But this, we're talking 80, what? Was this 87, 80, 89 well, by the time? Later, 
know if it's got the date on. There. I don't have my glasses on. The back of your CD yellow like this? Yeah. Yeah. So it, maybe it is what it is. I don't know. Oh, 90. look, it's, it says 90. Well, look at this. Look who's here. Kyle. Hey, welcome aboard. Hello, Grant and Byron just came over from Feet's 10 classic rock albums for a newbie video. Well, thanks for coming over. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks Kyle for coming over here to slum. Awesome. That's a great. All right, cool. Nice to see you. Anyway, uh, go ahead, Byron. Keep yeah, going. Uh, also, Logan had mentioned how, during the song, they break into Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, but the lyrics are completely different. They're, you know, based on the story. And I think that's kind of a nice little break in the middle. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. I, I just I just needed more instrumentation, more breaks from the monotony. That's all. That's all I'm asking for. And maybe I would like those uh, versions that came out on the box set. I would be happy to give those a shot. So there you go. Yeah, you should check out the uh, Carnegie show sometime. And there's a two disc version and a three disc version. The three disc mm -hmm. version, the first disc is um, the uh, Persuasions. They were the opening band. We've, we've oh, talked to the Persuasions in the past. Yeah. The Persuasions were great. Yeah, they were that doo wop band that Frank found. <clears throat> he, loves, he loved them, and they were top notch, though. So anyway, yeah, <clears throat> I guess we can go on the side two now. Yeah, I guess I'm tag teaming with you because I just said everything I wanted to say about it. So keep going and then I'll just chime in. This is this works. All right. So we're on the side two and it starts with Colony Vegetable, which um, was on the Absolutely Free album originally. Um, this version's a lot heavier. I mean, you know... It, it's a, this band is it's a different band, you know, and they take it more of a rock approach to it. Um, you know, the vocals are kind of over the top, like all the flow and Eddie stuff. It's got a real nice guitar solo in it. I kind of like this a little better than the original. It just, it just rocks more. What are your thoughts? I don't like it as well as the original, but I will say this. It's got too much flow and Eddie on it, but... <laughs> And I could do without that, but the guitar on it's great. I like that it's it's actually pretty heavy. Yeah, it is. as Martin's pop off would say, this is heavy. And the guitar on it, I think some. Uh, I'm assuming that's Frank, right? Yeah. I like what he's bringing to the table. After Billy the Mountain, I think this is a refreshing track. I do get tired of the whole Flo and Eddie shtick on it, but. I don't mind it as much as some of the other stuff that we've looked at, looked at. So it's okay. It's yeah. all right. Um, the one thing I do like, um, I do believe, uh, is this, well, no, no, forget it. Forget it. I'm looking at a different note. I'm good with that. I'll have to refer to what I'm looking at next, next, uh, track so go ahead keep going yeah okay so that jumps right into the next track eddie are you kidding <clears throat> which um i believe got some co-writes with Flo and eddie on this and maybe some uh, some other guy from the turtles got a co-write on this i believe as well um it's a song about edward nalbandian <laughs> who owned a store called Zachary All Clothing. Now, maybe Ernesto knows who the hell that, what store that store is, because he's from the area. And I think this guy, he'd do his TV commercials, and he had this kind of shtick, and they were kind of these famous commercials. So the song's kind of about that, you know, or like, he's, you know, Eddie, are you kidding? And they're talking about the clothes, and I've seen you on the TV, and uh, I saw your double knits, you know? <laughs> So it's about the clothing store guy. And um, I, I've never seen these commercials, so I don't know what they were like. But I don't maybe, either. Maybe Ernesto could chime in with, with some thoughts about that. Yeah, if, Ernesto. If you use any of that. Ernesto. Ernesto. Yeah, Ernesto, chime in on that if you know anything about that, because that would be more of your quote-unquote area of town. So, uh, But, you know, the song has got kind of a, a 50s feel, you know, like that Frank liked to do. Um I kind of like it, you know. It, it's it, it could have gone. It could have been on a, an earlier Mother's album without Flo and Eddie singing, and it probably might have fit. It probably would have fit, 
But I do dig the reference to Columbus, Ohio, and I do believe Howard Kalen is the one making that reference. Make the, what's the reference again? I, I forget what the whole thing was about Columbus, Ohio. I didn't write it down. Hmm. But they do. Uh, Grant, Logan. Yes, this is. I love this record. Look, Logan says the COT army coming in droves. <laughs> Look, we even have the principal Gary here, Gary Joyce. Look at that. All these guys come on over to slum over here. I love it. Appreciate it. I'm just giving you guys a hard time. I appreciate everybody coming on, and you know that. Uh, Ernesto's trying to remember, uh, but I'm not that old. So, see, there you go. It was before yeah. uh, Ernesto's time, and the Ernesto's store, pretty old. The store was on Wilshire Boulevard, I believe. Uh, I was reading a little bit about this because, you know, for years I always – I was like, what is this about? And I kind of Googled it and I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, okay. I think I may have heard that record hound. Uh, a friend of mine used to have that album. I think I've got illegal, immoral, and flat, fatting, flattering or whatever it is. I can't fattening. remember. Fattening? I think it should have been illegal, immoral, and, and flattering. I don't know. Whatever. I think I have that, but I don't know if I have that record anymore. I bought it like a thousand years ago. And I haven't seen it lately, so I might not have that. But I had it. You just misplaced it. <laughs> I had it. Um, but yeah, I like that track. It's it's kind of catchy, you know. It's just it's catchy. I do like it so far as the best track on the record. <laughs> it's not threatening, but none of this is like. I just don't think that this record is it's just not a serious Zappa album. No. It's not. And it's we talked about fun. this where I think there was this period where I, I, I'm not sure he knew what he was doing. And I think, I hate to say it that he, when he fell off the stage or got pushed off the stage, however you want to, whatever happened, uh, it might've been a good, I hate, I don't mean it was a good <laughs> thing, but to have that break, and for Frank to go back and kind of reassess things. Cause after we got through this period, we start a, a absolutely wonderful period in the Frank Zappa catalog. Yeah. So I think maybe the break was good in a weird dementia way, demented way. I don't know. Right. Logan fusion Zappa is around the corner and I dig all that. So, but we're going to, we're going to talk about that. All right. So, that brings us up to the difficult part of the album to talk about. <laughs> difficult for you? Uh, no, I can talk about it. I'm not sure some people will find it difficult. Um, Magdalena. Wow. Um, this is probably the most inappropriate song I've ever heard. <laughs> well, that's. And I'm going to tell you, I really like it. I really like this song. <laughs> Well, I would say that out of, I mean, I think the record keeps getting better with each track. Yes, it's inappropriate. Yes, it's childish. And, but I kind of dig it as far as the melody and, you know, instrumentation and all that. I think it's an all right track. I would say musically, this song is brilliant. Okay. It's an it's it's vaudeville again, really, in my opinion. Those verses, um, wow. Um, the 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 tempo speeds up, it slows down. Uh, there's all these changes to it. Um, Howard wrote the lyrics to this apparently um, to try and get a reaction out of Frank, is what I had read. Uh, I think they were in Montreal when he wrote it because. The, the song is about a guy in Montreal who makes maple syrup and he tries to cop a feel off of his daughter. <laughs> nice Christian, <laughs> nice Christian topic. Uh, but um, it doesn't go well for him. So, you know, I don't think, okay, this is not a Jamie's got his, got a gun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that song is very dark and kind of sad. <laughs> Jamie's is, got her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, this is dark humor. It's not dark uh, drama. It's just dark humor. Um, but um, it's such a good song though. Uh, 
to me, this kind of picks up where Brown shoes don't make it left off because it's kind of a similar topic where that guy's fantasizing about apparently his daughter or this guy's actually do, trying to do something about it and it, it just doesn't work out for him. But I still think that mother stuff, Brown shoes don't make it. It's just on a different level. Well, like I said, Frank didn't write these lyrics, so. These yeah, but he would have to approve it. He'd have to approve yeah, it. Yeah, I think he just thought, yeah. This, he thought it was probably funny, and it's like, yeah, let's just, just do it, you know? So. Uh, <laughs> oh, Kyle. Kyle's Googling. <laughs> Brace yourself, Kyle. Oh, she doesn't. You got to hear the song though, Kyle, because it's the musically, it's just so good. Um, yeah, musically, it's good. It's the best thing on the record, musically, I would say. But, uh, like I said, it has all these tempo changes too. Um, you know, the verses are real fast, almost hard to keep up with them. And then the <laughs> crotchless underwear. Well, Logan, who doesn't like crotchless <laughs> underwear, for God's sake? <laughs> Little mayonnaise and KO pectate. <laughs> Take care of everything. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, like, and the chorus is it really kind of slows down. But then there, uh, there's this bridge in the middle where it's real fast and they're singing falsetto. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where he's like, uh, Don't, I hope your mom doesn't see this because she's going to call a lawyer. <laughs> you know? But, um, that, but you know what? Even the ending, though, is so good because it's it's so slow. It's, the ending starts out so slow, and Howard's just trying to rationalize what he did and how, why why he did, did it. And then it just builds up to this furious climax at the end, with, and the si you start to hear the siren going off. Man, it, it is just a good song. Um, I don't it's know what the else. best thing here. I will give you that. I mean, I don't want to look like we're a couple of perverts saying, yeah, this is a great song. But I'm not being that way. You <laughs> might look like the pervert, but I am. Well, I I've already said all this is very childish and yeah. immature. And it's great if you're 17 and you go, oh, wow, listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any kids, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, my kids never listen to any of this stuff, so. <laughs> But yeah, I, I I always just thought this was just a great song. Yeah, it was. It's very inappropriate, and but it's funny too. I mean, it's funny in a dark way. I like dark humor. Like I love to watch Fargo and all that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah, so. but I like that too. But I like good dark humor. I don't find any of this fun or funny. Really, I don't. <laughs> Maybe I'm. Crush the old man. The song on the album so far. It is, but I don't find the I, instrumentation, melody, oh. things like that. But as far as lyrical content, I. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. as a song, it's okay. I think Howard's ad libbing a lot of that toward the end too. It's just like, how do you come up with this, man? <laughs> Howard Kalen play, played in some episodes of General Hospital. I didn't know I've that. I've never seen that. <laughs> oh, Ernesto, you like Red Fox? He likes the blue stuff. And he's a pervert. That's weird. I've never seen anybody admit something like that in the warehouse, but uh, we'll make sure it gets around. Well, I mean, I don't get it. I don't know. Anyway, so that <laughs> sums up the record. No, we got one more song. Wait a minute. I'm getting a fart. Where's my... Oh, shit. That oh, dog right breath. God. God. Right. Idiot me. All right. Yeah, go right. ahead. So, yeah, uh, Magdalene just, just jumps right into dog breath, um, which was on uh, Uncle Meat. Excuse me. Um, there were two versions on two versions of dog meat on Uncle Meat that were um, one was a real 50s kind of Pachuco style track and a lot of horns and saxes. And then the other was uh, orchestral. And this is nothing like that at all. This is louder, heavier, uh, rocks, you know, just rocks. It's got yeah, a good, I like it. Oh, that's a good, good rock inversion. Um, like I said, mm -hmm. it sounds like the Flo and Eddie stuff. You know, it's, it's more hard rock compared to the original Mothers. So I, I like it. Um, I don't it's, it, I, I don't really want to compare this to the Uncle Meat tracks because it's so different than those two versions. So No, I still prefer the Uncle Meat tracks because I, I pref prefer that band. 
Um, yeah, well, not by much. If we could get rid of Flo and Eddie, I think we really have something here. But well, there's more nuances to the original Mother's stuff, but you know that was all studio stuff too. Where there was a yeah. whole lot, there's so much going on on those studio tracks. Where this, this is just you know a five piece or whatever band with two singers just rocking out. So it doesn't have those nuances to it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So you mentioned all this. And you say this isn't, how often would you revisit this record, Byron? Because I'll never revisit it again. But I'm asking about you. I think I mentioned like in the last show, um, you know, when you got so much stuff in your collection, it's hard to go back. But I usually seem to get back and hear most everything in my collection every five years or so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean. Uh, but here's the deal. I mean, now that we're, since, since we're doing these episodes, mm-hmm. I'm having to go back and listen to these. I probably listened to this two, three years ago, but I'm, now that we're doing an episode, I'm listening to it again. And that's, what's cool about this is that this is forcing, well, not forcing you. It's forcing you. <laughs> it's forcing me. Yeah. But I didn't, I want to at least say this. And I've said this before when we started this series, I had high hopes for this stuff because I love Flo and Eddie. I just don't like Flo and Eddie here. That's all. I don't, I just don't dig it. But, uh, this is not a record that, uh, I would return to where you could give me absolutely free. Really in it for the money. Uncle meat. Well, heck yeah, even uh, Freak Out, you know, that those four records, I think uh, I could listen to at any time and I never get tired of them. And I think with each listen, I think the songwriting, maybe not so much the production, a lot of that stuff sounds very 60s. It depends upon what you would like. But the ba- the mothers had something special. The original mothers had something special. And Frank was on fire as far as his steward, his uh, uh, studio wizardry. And the songs are great and well arranged. And the productions are great. I, there's not anything bad about it. And this is why that whole Mothers of Invention period, the original period, gets such great, is looked to as some of the best albums in the greatest albums of all time list. You're not going to see another, just another band from LA. It just doesn't, after the monumental work that Frank has already given us, I think that this is just so subpar. And I just think he's just in a, in a period of, I'm not sure if he knows exactly what he wants to do. You know, I don't know. It just, is just a minor work. Yeah. I, I just think he was just having a good time. He brought Flo and Eddie in. And this was like, yeah, I guess. Right, here's a few songs I'm going to write. You guys just do your thing. And I'm just going to kind of sit back and enjoy it. Young Logan says the Flo and Eddie period is rough. Gary Joyce agrees. But he says there's moments of goodness. The principal says he likes the 74 to 79 era ish era that's a good we're gonna get there we're getting close it's all good so anyway yeah what are your oh my god he got better when that dude pushed him off sorry frank well i don't know you wouldn't agree with that you like the early stuff the best well i think that was the peak he got better again is what you're thinking you're saying okay record hound I bet if you heard this LP in your teens, it may have struck you better. Yeah, Yeah, because you're immature and you like all that stupid shit. I just don't care for it anymore. You know? I've grown beyond that. I'm still immature, if if you ask my wife. Oh, and she's here. I know she's here. She left the thumbs up. So I know she probably could weigh in and let everyone know how immature. She says she's married to a 12-year-old. So There you go. Freak Out, great debut. You cannot dispute that. It's a great debut. And think about it. That debut album was a two-record set. What a bold move. But, uh, oh, Gary Joyce is also mature. Well, you have you guys in 
and uh, Byron have a lot in common. Yeah, Mrs. B.M. Bolt. We yeah. both have good taste in music, Gary and I. But uh, make a cake for Frank. All right, so let's really get down to it, since we like to rank these things. Yeah. I'll get up my handy dandy ranking thing because it's gonna. I'm gonna need math for this. I'm writing them down. I'm gonna. I'm keeping a f- spreadsheet of all of our. Oh, sp- look who's here. DC. I'm here now. Papa D has three grandsons here plus their dog. Uh, DC, you seem to have those grandkids over there an awful lot. You probably have those grandkids over there more than you've even had your original children with you. <laughs> anyway, welcome aboard. We've got Logan in the house, Gary. We've got Kyle. We've got the record hound. We've got Jeff. Jeff's here. Hey, Jeff. Um, everybody's here. The whole gang. So anyway, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's give me your, uh, what's your rating on this? Well, <clears throat> I think I'm going to score it a little higher than you. I can guarantee it. That's, that's typically how it works with these Flo and Eddie albums. Um, you know, I got to go back. I usually try to go back and look at what I scored other albums to try and compare, you know, because I don't, I don't want to just pull numbers out of my butt that make no sense. Well, yeah, I got it. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go on this one a uh, 7.5. Holy I like it. I do. I think it's better. It's better than Fillmore. It's better than 200 motels. So uh, I don't think it's as good as Chunga's Revenge, but uh, yeah, 7.5. All right. All right. Let me plug that in real quick. I'm still... (laughs) It's taken a lot for me to type that. Um, 7.5. Well, you've heard what I had to say. Is this a better record than uh, 200 Motels? Is it a better record than uh, Fillmore? Fillmore East, which is one of the quote-unquote worst-reviewed Frank Zappa albums of all time. I would have have to say, what did I give Fillmore East? You you gave both those albums threes. Okay. This is a better record than those. Quite a bit. I would give this a five out of 10. Wow. (laughs) Well, I hated those other records. (laughs) I don't like Billy the Mountain, but I don't think side two is as bad as I'm making it out to seem. Um, I could use a lot less. I know you just don't want to really come out and say it. Well, (laughs) I think that, I think this record gets better as it keeps going. And that's probably the standout track, whether it's smutty and immature, that's another thing, but as a song, I think it's fine. So that's why I'm giving it a five out of 10. That's right. Let me carry the one. There's DC. DC is very popular. Gives us a 6.25, which, uh, yeah. Bye what average. did I say? Yeah. Bye yeah, average. 6.25. You're good with math. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You're a scientist. Okay. Anyway, so 6.25. That seems kind of high for it, though. This is really a minor work. But we all hear... Oh, Gary Joyce, Tales of Topographic Oceans or this? Oh, Tales from Topographic Oceans. This. Uh, no, Tales is a much better record. I like down. Tales. I like down. Tales. I like Tales, but it's not edited down, so. I think Tales is fine. At least you've got people playing on it. <laughs> I got the, Lil Nettie singing their asses off. Rick Wakeman <laughs> despised Tales, but you have to admit, some of his keyboard work on that is some of his best keyboard work. And of course, you've got Chris Squire, who's a machine. How could you not like Tails? Maybe it's a little bloated, but it's not boring. I don't find Tails very boring, but I don't find this boring either. So th- this just is kind of immature. And that's what's give getting Tails a five or a six. So there you go. What's Logan said, there's no references to crotchless yeah, underwear. Right. 
Right, exactly. Well, Tales is a much more serious work. You know, there's no comedy on that album. Well, I mean, I, I, you can't understand what the hell the album is. Maybe there is comedy. You just can't understand it. <laughs> so, Gary Joyce, you'd rather listen to uh, Billy the Mountain over and over again? Or what? What are you trying to say, Gary Joyce? He doesn't dig Tales. He doesn't dig it. It's, it's okay. Exactly. Gary Joyce agrees with you, Byron. What the hell is Anderson singing about? Does it matter? Ridiculous lyrics. What are you talking about, Logan? I rate the humor higher than average, but I collect comedy. Well, record hand, you have a little bit of a different history with this record too, than I do coming in. I'm flying in late. I discovered Zappa in like 1987s when I first discovered it. Of course, I don't know how old you are, but you know, that's when I discovered it, but I never got into this record. I don't know why I avoided it. I didn't avoid it. I never came across it and I never sought it out. That's all. Good music though. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Tales is so diverse. If there's any comedy, it goes right over your head. Except Steve Howe on that, on the volume pedal. Yeah. He likes that. Uh, yeah, oh, so well, like- record hounds. He's a young, he's a young spry individual. So yeah, anyway, well, there you go. To the next era here after this. Um, yes. What are we looking at next, Byron? Um, I think it's Waka Jawaka. Thank the Lord. Or no, Grand Wazoo. Thank the Lord again. And then Rock Waka Jawaka. All right. Well, we'll look at Grand Wazoo. We will get a date for that. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that was a 6.25 on this record. Your mileage uh, may vary. Uh, Please leave your uh, rating out of 10 in the comments. And let us know what tracks you like on here. You know? (laughs) Young 50. Hey, Gary. He's young compared to me. And Logan's very young compared to me. He's a baby. He's a baby. But we love Logan. Thank God Logan's here. That's you. Um, so anyway, I guess I don't have anything. Uh... Yeah. It's... Oh, here we go. Jeff goes, just checked a bit of this album on YouTube. Sorry to say you have not created a new Zappa fan here. Well, there you go. I get it. This is Jeff. This is not the (laughs) Jeff. This is not the record you should reach out and listen to first by any means. Yeah. Check out. Oh, we're only in it for the money or, um, I would go with, uh, overnight sensation or, or, uh, you know, one size fits all, uh, Roxy, um, Absolutely free. Yeah. Uh, maybe some of the late seventies, early eighties things like uh, Sheik Your Booty is a good one. And uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves there. We're not getting, don't get, oh, a- apostrophe got me hooked. Well, there, we're, we're going to get there. That's a great one. That's another good one. All right. We can wrap this one up. We almost won an hour. Um, I want to thank uh, everybody in the chat for chiming in. It's been great. If you're new to the channel, please like subscribe. There's going to be more great content down the road. Um, God knows what's next. Cause we did do this live. Hmm. I don't know what is next, but I do know I'll be on see a tranquility uh, recording an episode on Saturday that I don't know when that's going to air though. And then on Sunday, I'll be on Larry Graves channel with a panel talking Paul McCartney, uh, driving rain, believe it or not. There you go. I got a busy weekend boys. Busy weekend. Thank you, Logan. I've got nothing scheduled with you in the next couple of weeks. So I have no idea what you got going on. I've got April is almost booked. It's to, yeah. April's booked. I've got may half booked already. Uh, I don't know if the contrarians will be live next Wednesday because Jamie had a loss in his family and I have not heard. I know that Todd is on vacation. So 
I don't know if we're going to do it or not. I might find a couple of people to fill in for the live show. We'll see. I'm just not sure. Um, the topic on Saturday, I'll probably miss a band. Roxy Music, Super Tramp, uh, uh, going blank. I saw the preview for that. Yeah. I don't, I didn't see the preview. But well, there, it's like some bands that you, it, we're going to try to classify bands that are hard to classify. That's basically the, that's I basically the. I thought another one that would fit on there would be Bebop Deluxe. They yeah, I be, think so. Yeah. You should mention that in the chat. Yeah. That's, I am busy, Gary. Normally I don't do shows on the weekends, but I am now. So more live shows. Who's in? More live shows. Who's in? Oh, there you go. Logan said Roxy ELO Super Tramp. Yeah. 10 CC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bebop Deluxe. <laughs> Bebop Deluxe. I don't know why you're here. It's because I'm. Perfect. You're more than welcome, Record Hound. For God's sakes, what do you mean why you're here? I'm just busy. I'm not popular. ELO. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's what we're doing Saturday. I don't, I haven't really prepped for it, but I don't think I really have to. I've XTC Jesus. And I just mentioned XTC on the contrarian show we did tonight, but, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get some clarification on some of these bands. Cause to be quite honest, I'm not sure where I would classify them. I think XTC is more art rock, probably Roxy's art rock. I wouldn't classify those guys as progressive, just kind of, I don't know. It's odd. 10 CC is a hard one to categorize. I think it depends on what era you're in too. So, you know, they got rid of, uh, what's her names. And you know, we had, when we got, you know, had Goldman and just, um, got it brain. You know who I'm talking about? The yeah. guy that was in the mind benders. God. Yeah. They came, they were a little more Eric Stewart. Than- they were a little more commercial with those two. Yeah, I kind of dig that stuff, though. Yeah, that was fine. Yeah, I need fine. to. I need to check them out more. Oh, yeah, on Sunday, Ernesto's coming on, and we're going to do 10 L.A. bands apiece, and we're going to go live and talk about them. That's the live. Bill Nelson is phenomenal. So what yeah, is that's an L.A. On, band? <laughs> I'm going to probably pull just another band from LA. Yes. I'm going to, my one, I, my pick is going to be Billy the mountain. So get ready. Band from LA. I mean, shit. That's more, Hey, that's perfect. I, maybe I will play something off of this. Yes. That's a darn good idea. Byron Magdalena Magdalena. <laughs> I'll play that. I swear to God, I'm going to play that. <laughs> Jeff says wasp. I think, uh, I think Ernesto might be playing wasp. I don't know. Oh, anyway, let's tie this, wrap this up. It's nice talking to everybody in the chat. I appreciate everybody for coming on. Byron, Grand Wazoo. Grand Wazoo, yeah. I think I'll be in touch. Yeah. We'll get that scheduled. So I better do it sooner than later because the month is filling up. All right, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. And keep your eye out on that SOT episode. I hope I can deliver the goods. So hopefully, hopefully I learn a lot from it too. So all right, everybody. We'll see you. Have a good night. We'll see you next time.